Billionaire activist investor Paul Singer has been called the vulture lord and a bloodsucker by the former Argentine president Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. He's also been labelled a raider and a profiteer. He's feared the world over for hostile boardroom takeovers and profiting from debt-laden countries. He's so powerful, he brought Argentina to its knees and set off a chain of events that led to the impeachment of South Korea's president in 2017. Reviled by some, admired by others, he's also been described as a guru and one of the most revered hedge fund managers on Wall Street. When he decides that the company is undervalued and sees a path for unlocking that value, he's not going to let go. He's not one to walk away. If somebody had invested with you in the very beginning, what kind of rate of return would they have compounded over 40 years? One dollar uh, became like $160, $165. This is how Paul Singer made billions by building one of the world's largest and most controversial activist hedge funds. When Paul Singer talks, people tend to listen. In the world of finance, Singer is recognized as one of the most famous activist investors. Once known unflatteringly as corporate raiders, think merciless money makers like Wall Street's Gordon Gecko. Greed is good. Typically, they use junk bonds to buy stakes in companies and then leverage their positions on boards to boost undervalued stock and oust management. You either do it right or you get eliminated. They might have evolved since Gordon Gecko's day, but the way activists operate is still contentious. Passive investors tend to take meetings with the board and make their opinions known, but activists tend to go public. Scott DeVoe is Bloomberg's shareholder activist reporter. The activists would say that they're more collaborative and, and you know, the idea is to improve the company uh, and shareholder returns. Activism is doing all that work to, uh, to assess val uh, value and then taking steps to impact uh, the direction of the company. It's somewhat controversial because it's very competitive for the business space. Elliot is one of the most active activist investors in the world. Um, they're not afraid of a fight anywhere. Singer's fund, Elliot Management, Elliot is his middle name, has a tough and brutal reputation. When it invests in a company and an executive isn't on board with their plans, they're a target. Activist investor Paul Singer takes another shot at Samsung's Lee family. J.Y. Lee, the vice chairman of Samsung, was jailed after he bribed another investor to vote against Singer. Former Arconic CEO Klaus Kleinfeld resigned when he lost his cool with Singer during a proxy fight for control of the company. And more recently, Telecom Italia CEO Amos Ganish got the axe after resisting Elliott's restructuring plans. The list goes on. It's fair to say Singer makes execs nervous. While he's been condemned for allegedly employing bullying tactics, Singer doesn't worry about his reputation. He sees it as a selling point for his investors. It's good when a, um, a corporate executive listens with the understanding that we are real. Shareholders are equally relaxed. When Singer's company buys stock, his reputation can often be enough to raise the price. But he wasn't always successful. As a young man, Singer started to play the stock market with his father and learned quickly. He and I found just about every possible way uh, conceivable to lose money. And so when I started Elliott, I was determined to engage in um, a trading strategy that made money all the time. He started Elliott Management in 1977 after a stint as a real estate lawyer. His legal background would become invaluable though as he forged a path toward activism. By the 1980s, his funds started buying distressed debt from companies in or on the verge of bankruptcy. By the mid-90s, Singer's fund began buying something different, sovereign debt. He made millions extracting payment from Peru and later the Republic of Congo. But Argentina would become the one that made him respected and despised around the world. I think this would be a good example of the tenacity because this was a crazy fight. New York billionaire Paul Singer is Argentina's public enemy number one. Singer's fund bought $600 million worth of Argentinian bonds for about $100 million. Elliott targeted courts around the world to try and repossess Argentine assets. He tried to capture the central bank reserves, some of the pension fund assets. Uh, he also you know, targeted uh, SpaceX launch sites, all in the effort to 
get paid back. The most famous one was in 2012 when he tried to seize some Argentinian warships that were there for a training session in, uh, in Ghana. The UN had to intervene and the Libertad was eventually released a few months later. After 15 long years of legal battles, the country agreed to pay up. I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like it. Singer ended up getting paid about $2.4 billion, which was more than a 1,200% return on his investment. Critics condemned Singer's targeting of a weak country as immoral. Half the population was living in poverty after the country's default in 2001. But Singer saw it differently. He laid the blame at corrupt officials. Undeterred, Singer and his hedge fund went on to raise more than $5 billion in just 24 hours in May 2017. The fund is now worth an estimated $35 billion. In the first half of 2018, Elliott initiated 17 activist campaigns, vastly outnumbering the competition. Paul Singer still has plenty of appetite for activism if he sees value in a company. As much as they might not like the label of being a feared investor, you know, because they like to think of themselves as being constructive, when Elliott shows up in your stock, you know, you better listen.